Hello from The Standard, I'm Mark Blunden and this is Tech and Science Daily Podcast. Coming up, Singapore oil spill latest, but first... Clean Air Day is just around the corner, and while most of us have heard about ULES, that's the ultra-low emission zone, what are some of the other extra measures needed to cut levels of toxins in London's atmosphere and boost health? Tech and Science Daily asked Andrew Pendleton, who's Deputy Chief Executive of London-based environment charity Global Action Plan. Greening our neighbourhoods is absolutely key, because I think we'd all like our neighbourhoods to be greener and safer and probably more car-free if we could, but we need the alternatives first. So I think ULES is a really important first step. It will reap benefits over the longer term in terms of preserving people's lives and making us healthier throughout our lives, but we do need those other measures as well. And he explains the species of hardy trees that work well in urban environments. I'm a massive fan of a silver birch as a street tree. We've had to replace a lot of our ash trees. We had a lot of ash trees in London, but ash dieback has caused a lot of those to die. But there are resistant strains coming through now. Could be London plane trees. If we've got greener streets, we feel better about the places in which we live. And then over time, I think you can replace some of those parking spaces with some greenery, which would make us feel better. And what's more future governments must do to invest in London? A global action plan we think that the most important thing for the new London mayor and the new government in in a city like London is to give us lots more opportunities to cycle and walk and wheel safely because a lot of people probably are put off because they don't feel it's a safe thing to do to cycle for instance but also to make public transport cheaper and more available and more comfortable. I think a lot of people don't find public transport comfortable enough or convenient enough. He goes on to explain about the financial challenges. It's a difficult ask in these times, but I think if you look at something like nationally, 27 billion that's planned for roads, about half of that is for new roads. Now, if we put all that into walking and cycling and public transport, it would go a long way. And I think the majority of us would probably prefer if we had the option, particularly for shorter journeys, to walk and cycle. And many of us would like to use trains for longer journeys. But both of those things really require investment. Clean Air Day on the 20th of June will see events being held across the country. Next. A major oil spill on Singapore's coast has shut beaches at a popular tourist resort and was caused by a dredger boat losing engine power and steering control before hitting a cargo ship. Singapore authorities are scrambling to clean up the spill that has blackened the city-state's southern coastline amid fears of a devastating impact on wildlife. The Netherlands flag dredger von Maxima struck the Singaporean fuel supply ship Marine Honor on Friday. It ruptured one of the cargo tanks on the Marine Honor, which leaked low sulphur oil into the sea. Although the leak has been contained, tides washed the spilled oil that had been treated with dispersants further along the shoreline, including to the popular resort of Sentosa. Now, researchers at Cornell University in the US say they found that plants can adapt to avoid death by solving problems when they sense a neighbouring plant is being eaten by insects. Plants have a vascular system, which is a network of cells that transport water, minerals and nutrients to help growth. Now, this research on plant problem solving comes after the team studied goldenrod flowers as they observed how it responded when being eaten by beetles, emitting a chemical telling the insect that the plant's damaged and makes bad food. Previous studies have found that plants emit a high-frequency sound when they undergo environmental stress, such as damage to their leaves and stems. Next... Deploying NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory and ESA's XMM Newton, researchers are studying radiation from stars to examine whether their nearby orbiting exoplanets could support life. They're scanning levels of X-rays and ultraviolet lights, which, if powerful enough, could stop planetary environments from being habitable. Nearly 60 relatively nearby exoplanets have been examined in the Milky Way as part of the University of Maryland-led project. Crucially, they've found some stars where what's described as radiation blasting the habitable zone is somewhat milder than our own here on Earth. 
Now, an urgent warning has been issued by America's Centers for Disease Control and Prevention about an outbreak of potentially deadly salmonella poisoning linked to bearded dragon pet lizards. Bearded dragons carry salmonella bacteria in their droppings and the CDC says when a person touches the lizard or its cage and then touches their mouths or food when they eat, they risk contracting the bacteria. The CDC recommends washing hands regularly after touching a lizard, making sure young children under five avoid contact and having a dedicated enclosure that keeps them from roaming freely around the house. Let's go to the ads. Stay there for more news from the world of tech and science. Plus, it's Mark Zuckerberg's mega yacht. Why not hit follow in the meantime to give us a rating? Welcome back. A farm left to nature years before rewilding rose to prominence has become a unique and important site for wildlife. So say conservationists who are launching a bid to save it. The owner of Strawberry Hill near Bedford stopped farming his land 37 years ago, with once arable fields reverting to scrubland. That is now a haven for a host of wildlife, including threatened nightingales, cuckoos and turtle doves. But the 377-acre site has no official designations or protections, and following the owner's death, there were fears the land could be sold and returned to agriculture. The Wildlife Trust for Beds, Cams and North Ants has raised enough money to buy half of the land, but now is trying to find a further £1.5 million to secure the rest of the site. And finally... Facebook boss Mark Zuckerberg has been showing off his latest billionaire's toy, a $300 million superyacht called Launchpad. The multi-billionaire gave it a spin around the Spanish coast after celebrating his 40th birthday. The 118-metre long yacht comes with a support boat called Wingman, which cost an estimated $30 million. Launchpad has room for 26 guests and 50 crew aboard and includes a beauty centre, cinema and a helicopter. You're up to date. Come back at 4pm for the latest news, interviews and analysis from the Standard Podcast here in London. And we'll be back on Tuesday at 1pm. See you then.